What If Season 2 Episode 3 Thoughts. This episode is called What If Happy Hogan Saved Christmas. Another episode I love, like almost everything MCU. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, as over the opening, we get several Christmas songs, some real classics, and the... let's see... Yeah, and, and it's, yeah, it starts out with this thing of, you know, oh, they're trying to prepare for the, the Christmas party, so classic Christmas thing there. And, and, and it's even, yeah, and, and the watcher says, this is, isn't this nice? You know, it's, it's Christmas, they made sure this episode would air on Christmas Eve. So, yeah, they're, they're celebrating, you know, for once he's telling a nice story, you know, it's not some kind of end of the world threat to the multiverse. It's just, this is a nice Christmas story. I like Christmas. Let's, let's just enjoy Christmas for once. You know, everybody needs to, to take a break every so often. And, yeah, love seeing Darcy again. Always in favor of, of Darcy in the MCU. Especially as long as it's Kat, Kat Dennings doing the voice. And, and, yeah, she's doing this yet again for college credit. Which I do appreciate that they have that line there. Because I was thinking, when did Darcy work directly for... That like she she worked for Jane Foster, but she never and and you know later she she worked with uh, so sword, but she never worked directly with the Avengers like this. So, but yeah, college credit. I will admit I'm not one hundred percent certain. I guess this is supposed to be shortly before Age of Ultron because they have an intact. Hulkbuster and the Iron Legion are there, but other than that, I was I, I, yeah, that's enough. Fair enough. That is enough. We can place it in the yeah, and and Hogan is so eager to get rid of Darcy that you know he's staring at this this jar of the of these cherries and he's like, we need cherries, you know, just because like like obviously they don't need them, and he knows this is something that she's gonna have to like leave to to go get. This is not something that she can just find there. I really appreciate that like the the major cast here are actual like comedy actors, you know. You've got Kat Dennings and Ah crap. I I'm gonna I'm gonna find it real quick. Maria Hill Let's see, she's certainly in the first Avengers. Uh, I swear, it's my, it's the ADHD. It's not a lack of respect. Yes, Kat Dennings and Kobe Smulders were on sitcoms, you know, for, for years, you know, and, and John Favreau and Sam Rockwell both, you know, they're also very capable dramatic actors. But for a while, they were known as comedy actors. And let's see. Yeah. They actually, Justin Hammer's the Grinch. I love it. They, they do the, the you know, not, not quite the full smile, but he does a sinister smile and the, the, the lighting gets, gets very dark. You know, just like, I've, I don't think I've actually sat down and saw, watched the entire thing. I'm not even sure... It plays on on TV in, here in Denmark, but you know I've seen that clip. That that clip, you know, pop culture osmosis. Everyone's seen the the you know the Grinch smiling and the 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 shade covering. It's just yeah, and and yeah, this is this is the first Die Hard movie. Just yeah, absolutely love it. And <laughs> Justin Hammer, he has no original ideas. Like he's he's passing off. I, I I forget what it's called, but it, you know it's is it just called a Christmas story? Yeah, I get, yeah, yeah, Christmas story. The the nineteen eighty three movie, you know, he really wants this BB gun, and you know his his tongue gets stuck on the. I I quite appreciate that they're they're still referencing that because the the kid who played the lead in that, actually, you know, he's he's the one who. He, he, he appears a couple of times, I guess twice, in the MCU. He's the one who tells, you know, when when, when Obadiah Stane's like, Tony Stark built this in a cave, 
with a box of scraps. You know, he's the one who says, I'm sorry, sir, I'm not Tony Stark, you know. And so, so yeah, the fact that they're still referencing a Christmas story is, is great. And, and like, one of the, one of the guests there is like, that's, you're talk, you're, you're referencing a movie right now. That's not your life, you know, just, yeah. And I, I love that the, the Iron Legion I refer to as Johnny Fives, like, my God, I, I remember that movie. I remember being a kid and watching. I, ah, crap. See, for years, I only knew it by its Danish title, so I'm just going to uh, sh uh, short circuit, you know. And it's significantly lesser sequel, short circuit, too. I have not thought about either of those movies since watching uh, Chappie, you know, years ago. So, yeah, thank you for that, that reminder. And, and yeah, they're, they're there for the... The Hulk blood and hammer dances at least twice in this episode, as he does in Iron Man 2. And apparently, just in general, like Sam Rockwell likes to dance to, what was it, get into character or, or to relieve tension right before it takes something like that. And, you know, John Favreau is like, yo, that's, yo, that's great. Let's have him actually dance in the movie and have some reaction shots where people are like, what is, what is he doing? Can we make him stop? Like, is there a law against this? <laughs> I am Tony Stark's greatest adversary. His greatest adversary. What are you, a wealth tax? Very nice. And let's see. Yeah, and and so so Happy is like stuck part way down and he's worried about, you know, and it seems like okay, he's not gonna gonna fall onto the, the floor. But then the, the, you know, the radio drops out, slow motion, and he catches it, you know. And it's this, like, straight out of Mission Impossible 1. I love it. Just, you know, there it's a drop of sweat. Or, or wait, no, I guess it's more like the knife in the, yeah, but just, yeah, really great. And, yeah, Happy Hogan hulks out. And, yeah, love, love to see it. There, there really has not been... Considering that the Hulk has been in the MCU since 2008, it's pretty wild how few Hulks we've seen. Like, you know, okay, so there's Hulk himself, obviously. There's the the Abomination. We have the... the what was his name? Todd, the, the douchey tech bro. I guess I don't need to say both of those things. You know, the... the the Elon Musk guy on She-Hulk, you know, and and there's Hulk's son. Yeah, there really have not been very many. You know, in the comics, there's a bunch of Hulks, not just Bruce Banner and his relatives. And <laughs> yeah, I love that his body is like slowly hulking out. Like at first, it's just his leg, which you know, yeah, like it's it's an injection, like. Bruce Banner was like right by the ra the the what's it gamma radi radiation generator thing thingy as it blew up you know he was completely covered in this this is just an injection of course it's gonna take a little longer you know it's actually like it's it's similar to like I I I don't know everything about this but I've heard that if you inject a leg it's not you know it's not gonna immediately go everywhere in the body, you know, so just, yeah, very nicely done there, and, yeah, he makes some calls to the various team members, which just, yeah, very fun, um, so, so, yeah, Natasha, <laughs> is that a, she said this thing of, like, the, the, uh, the Nutcracker, which, I believe is originally Russian, so, you know, of course she'd be there, and she's standing, you know, there's there's this other Hydra assassin, and you have this thing, you know, she's got like 18 kills, 19, that was, that was me, and the, you know, that was you, show off, and the, you know, let's see, I think, yeah, yeah, Tony is like, he has agreed to, you know, do the Santa thing, because every so often, he, he gets this, crazy idea in his head that he's he's you know good at this whole like charity thing when he isn't like completely botching it so 
yeah, he's he's sitting there and he's like, I cannot deal with these freaking kids, seriously. And, you know, Clint and, and Bruce are like, you know, fighting over the last Iron Man toy, which, like, I, I guess, ev you know, evidently someone remembers, uh, I'll have the title momentarily, someone actually remembers the... I hear terrible movie jingle all the way. That's like wow. I mean, I'm I'm sure many of the people who were unfortunate enough to watch it cannot get it completely out of their head. I, I really do love like they're bringing up Christmas classics all over the place. It's not just the the ones that are actually good movies. And the let's see, yeah, and yeah, uh, Hogan fully hulks out. And, yeah, we learned that Darcy has been in college for the better part of a decade. And <laughs> Darcy says, does this mean I'm your Reginald Val Johnson? Which, like, seriously, props. He's great in that movie. And, yeah, uh, Hogan does the thing of, you know, swinging out the, the you know, in, yeah, it's slightly different circumstances. But, yeah, you know, and, and swinging back in through a through a window and he also like uses a table as cover for for gunfire so this is very similar to and and the the mobsters or, uh, yeah the people attacking are like Europeans so just yeah very nicely done not not the exact same part of Europe necessarily but although I feel like it's been some it's been years since I last watched it I feel like at least one of them was like Eastern European, but some of them are more like German. Anyway, the, the, wow, I just realized that's very optimistic or remarkably ignorant, but I guess for, for Americans, that's not, they were not the best of friends in the late eighties. Just that's wow. Yeah. Anyway, moving on the, the, and we have the, um, yeah, so yeah, he tests his, his strength, and then he's like, okay, breathe. And, yeah, Darcy is hacking. I love that, you know, like in the movies, or movie mostly, Hammer is very chatty. I like his lines better in this episode than I, you know, a lot of his lines in Iron Man 2 I was not the biggest fan of, which really, it's it's too bad, because I really, really dig Sam Rockwell. And, yeah, love seeing Happy Hulk and Hulk beating up Iron Legion droids, and I, <laughs> Hammer actually calls him Hulk Hogan. Very nicely done. That's, yeah, I, I'm just saying... The, the writers, I really hope, like, high-fived each other and maybe got a pay raise for, for realizing we can, we can actually have, yeah, Hulk Hogan. And, yeah, very cool as Justin in the Hulkbuster fights Hulk Hogan. Darcy mentions she interned at Culver University, which is the university from the first... I keep saying the first. I don't need to say the first from the Hulk solo movie, and <laughs> so we were all, before this bit, we already learned that the, the AI they're going to use is Werner. It's, a, it's Werner Herzog. Like, I didn't see in the credits if that's actually him or they got an impersonator. Low, you know, Werner Herzog is already in Disney. He did some Star Wars stuff, so, just, yeah, that was, that was very funny, and, you know, Hill is like, what is this, Siri for Nihilists? And, let's see, then we have, yeah, the Avengers fighting Hulk Hogan. And, yeah, Justin falling out the window in slow-mo. You know, very, very nicely done. And they, they catch him, you know, goodwill towards all men, because it's Christmas, even the bad ones. And... Yeah, and and he even he says humbug, which may either means he's Scrooge 
or means that he's offering Baldrick some humbug. And yeah, the, the outro rhymes like that old poem that's often, you know, that's, I, I want to say that's also like a Christmas special with, you know, all through, all through the, the, all through the whatever, you know, not a creature was stirring, not even, you know, something like that. Again, I'm not sure that airs here in Denmark, and I haven't watched TV for like a decade, so. But the, yeah, and it sounds like it's a legitimate outtake at the very, very end of the, the credits, where Kat Dennings apparently like cracks up as she's like, apparently making up on the spot, inserting her character into these, like, famous Christmas songs. I like that she got Steve Rogers in there, and honestly, it's, yeah, this, you know, this was a, a point in the MCU where, where, you know, yeah, young women were quite enamored with him, so, you know, this is before, like, I can imagine Civil War probably did some damage to his image. So, so, yeah, the... And, and yeah, she just, she cracks up in, in the take, so I'm quite glad that they had that. Which also kind of implies to me that they actually do allow at least some level of, like, spontaneity and improv in the recording sessions in the ADR booth, which, yeah, props. Yeah, absolutely love this episode. Um, yeah, I, I, I really hope that the Abzu keeps doing these like, Christmas specials or holiday specials, you know, this is, they're, they're two for two. There's, there's the Guardians of the Galaxy one from last year, and then this one just, like, yeah, hit it out the park.